episode we're doing something a little bit different here and you can see we're in the uh, creative testing world here and this is the uh, CMP as we call it, so creative multiplayer, so we have this regular SMP and the CMP where we've been testing uh, some other things you can see planned out soon but uh, for this video I wanted to do something a bit different and show some more progress on the autocrafters I have made and yeah so we have them all pretty much scattered around right now but this is like the main one that's going to be added into the storage i am going to also add the one i just finished over there which is the hopper crafter so today's video we're going to show off the piston ones i already have a dedicated video for where i showed off the max potential of this one and you could obviously do the same with these ones just you know swap them in place and expand up there's all six wide tile up well they're five wide so they're five blocks wide here, but they do need one block in between because of the drop evaders here. If you put them too close, they would interfere with each other, and then that would not be good. So yeah, I do need to still add that hopper one right here into the mix here. But for now, this is just the hallway we have. I can always just extend this very ever so slightly. And then, yeah, so the piston crafter here makes 1,600 pistons an hour, so 1,600 pistons an hour. Observer one is about the same speed, 1600. Repeater is a bit faster. And the comparator one is around 1200 an hour. Just tested the hopper one and it's the same exact thing basically. So they're both about the same. You can see they look very similar. You wouldn't notice the top part of the piston one being a bit taller. Then that would be it. But with the piston having four different materials, it is kind of a bit of a jumbled mess back here compared to the one that only has two things that you need to put in with the hopper. You can actually have a little bit more storage here as well. So you could obviously fit more storage on this one uh, if you were to extend this higher, but then you would go into the height and then that could be an issue for some people. So it already is quite tall as you can see, but I have since improved with some of them with being not nearly as tall. So yeah, we're gonna go through these big crackers here, explain them and break them down. Alright, so I have them all broken down here, and obviously each one will to indicate which one is which. We have a block indicating the uh, crafter that it makes. So here, we go to the first one we ever made, which is the piston one. I have since adapted it a little bit so we can uh, actually change this up. So that's how I originally had it. What I did now is I put a no block there. I then put two power rails on the side. Obviously glass on top to spawn proof it. I then move this observer up, put a block in there, and then put a piece of dust here. That just gets rid of a bunch of unnecessary dust and obviously put a piece of glass to spawn proof that. Uh, but yeah, so to first understand what we do here, we need to break down the auto crafting itself. So the easiest way to do it, which is what I've done my, ever, my first ever time doing auto crafters, is to just do a hopper line. This pretty much breaks it down into everything you want to do, similar in uh, the auto crafting. So say we wanted to craft a very simple thing like an iron block. What we would need is we would need a uh, iron block to go into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is how the auto crafting table works. You actually need to uh, enable that on the server here just to show that so we're going to throw nine iron ingots actually we'll do it the uh, better way this is obviously the very simple recipes where you just need all one type of item and if you want to do it the whole the, this is the easiest way if you want to think about it but there are definitely faster ways so we break this and we should see one two three four five six seven eight nine then we've got an iron block then at that point in time, we can take it out with a hopper. So if you wanted to have the hopper here, you would need to lock the hopper in some sort of way. And then if we trigger it again, see the items will stay in there until we unlock it after the last one. And then we got our iron blocks here. So that is the easiest way to do it if you want to uh, break it down. So you basically you can imagine each hopper here is a slot in the crafting table, and it fills from top left to bottom right in a fashion like that. 
So say you wanted to craft something a bit more difficult, like let's say a piston, for example. It is one of the sort of easy ones to do compared to all the other ones, but you can see right here is the uh, crafting sequence that we have behind here. So what we do first is we trigger this one on the left here, which is responsible for the, uh, let's get the stuff we need. So we need wood, cobble, redstone, and iron. So we need to do that over there. Cobble here, uh, I think it's redstone up top, and then iron in the back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on for a few cycles here, and you can watch the uh, thing in action. So we can see we need to do the three wood planks first, then we do the cobble, iron cobble, cobble, redstone cobble. That's the sequence we need, and it is quite a bit of a weird one, but this sequence right here gives us three reliably every single time. So you see we get one, two, three, and a very quick thing, which also improves the speed. But then you can see very quickly after that, we do cobble, iron cobble, very quickly, and then cobble, rest, and cobble. So yeah, that's the sequence we need for that one. That one was one of the, I guess it was my first one ever, so it did take some bit of learning and knowing what would give me three uh, items, and then what would give me one space one, and then one space one, and also improvement on that speed. But lamps are very helpful for uh, drawing out a signal for just ever so slightly longer than a repeater can. So yeah, that's that sequence down, and then we go to the uh, observer one, which is a bit of a weird one. So yeah, this one's a bit of a uh, bigger area, but we still don't need to worry about any uh, fit items. So we should be able to do this. That should be the correct sequence here. And there you go. So cobble, two redstone, then a quartz, then three more cobble. Still pretty quick. Then the harder one, so with this one and the hopper are the more harder ones, so let's save those two for the end and we'll go to the repeater one here. This is also a pretty easier one because you only need six items, so it should be considerably quicker. The, re uh, the recycle could be a bit quicker as well, but wasn't too worried about that. Got it down to as pretty much quick as I could. Um, if we got rid of this right here, we wouldn't have a quick pulse. We would need a gravity block, and I don't really want to put a gravity block uh, there. You can see that the power rails don't even look to update on our end, but I can see the observer still is getting powered. So that's all I really care about. And then, yeah, you can see that sequence is there is quite quicker. So we should get about, uh, I believe, 1800 an hour with that faster cycle there. But yeah, now we move on to the two that are one of the, the two hardest ones that I could think of comparator and a hopper. So what's special about the comparator is we have two empty spots on the crafting recipe. And so we go to do, do a comparator here. Let's just find a crafting table. We need to handle a dummy item, which is easiest to use by using the actual comparator itself as its own dummy item. So that way, when we take the items out, we can recycle them, in a sense. So here we need to set up a filter. And we'll just do that. And then we need to do a filter here, which is just all comparators. Fill this one up with all comparators as well. So you do need a bit of pre-fill in for these ones, which is why you don't really want to do a bunch of them, because obviously a lot of uh, comparators and stuff need to go into that. I think got it all sorted out. Oh, yeah, it was in there in the right spot. And then there we go. Oh, I, there was an item stuck in there. Very easy fix. We'll just take all this out, take the uncrafted item there. And then now we should be good to go. It's always a good thing that these keeps uh, restocking, which is always good. And if it does fail, that will obviously decrease a little bit because it's not getting the required amount. But now we should be all good. And there you can see the two dummy items in the top we use the comparator so we can have the filter be the comparator and then we just restock this over here with the filter items and then the one that gets crafted will make its way to the shulker loader and this will always stay restocked and never should run out at all 
But yeah, this one is obviously a bit slower because we need to get all the items in there first, but then we need to take out the two ones that we do not need for the recipe and do that instead. But it's still quite quick, about 1,200 to 1,300 an hour for a single module, which is only you know, five wide. So do use very little uh, lag of the server because it always, once have you use it appear, only gets used when you put items into the thing. So if you don't put any items into it, then you don't use any of these observers and droppers and all that stuff. So that is the only time that it actually is a bit of a lag thing, but it only gets used once. For about 54 shortcut boxes of each item, it can handle. You don't want to leave any items into here, because then it won't update until you send more items through. Then you'd still have items stuck in here. It's not a good idea. One flaw with the system, but that's how we do it. So here we have the very simple one, which is just two items. And obviously the dummy item. But that is not an issue. That is actually not the hopper. This one is over here for the hopper. So that is that one. Then down here is the restock for this one. So we need a filter here. And then a filter here as well. Then that should be that. So, same amount of items basically. And then this one over here should be the iron. And then this one should be the chest. This one is pretty much the same speed as that one because we still the same amount of dummy items. We just need to fill one less slot. But other than that, it's still the quickest. Uh, Restock as I could get there. It's pretty much right as it empties, it's already getting the next items, which makes it a bit faster than the comparator one, but not too much. It still adds a bit of, to it, which is always good. But this one is, is a bit of a weird circuit here because we need to get five items, not six. We need to get five iron, not six, and the original one I had to give this, as you see, this one stays up a little bit longer than the one on the bottom. That's to give us the extra item. Which is what we want. So yeah, all in all, these crafters will have their purpose, whether it's in our AutoCraft series, which is not the reason why we called it AutoCraft, but it is a feature that we will be using on the server. Also, something about these crafters is we have this indicator lamp here that uh, if it is flashing, that means the crafter is working properly. So we take the output from the table here and we run that up to the lamp, turn that on. So that if it is flashing with a sign here, uh, that will mean the system's working properly and you also get your shulker boxes back up here. Obviously these are all meant to have shulker boxes uh, input as all of them have a shulker box loader or unloader tied to them. And if you ever need to put shulker boxes into the system down here, this piston one has it in the ground here because we have four items already here. That way you put it down there underneath the shulker box and that will take it to the loader. This one over here has its own dedicated section because we only need three items. But it also has the indicator lamp, which this one indicates that the system is on. This one indicates if the system is running properly. This is, like I said, uh, stuck on in the on state instead of flashing uh, like this. You can see that the crafter has broken. Perfect example is we are out of items here, so we are out of wood as well as cobble. Quick indicator that this is what the usefulness of that lamp there is. So now we should get a flash in. There we go. That means the crafter is working properly. That one being on. Obviously, you wouldn't have these here. This is just to signify what crafter is what. You couldn't guess by the items in the frame. Because obviously some of them get a little confusing when you have quartz, quartz, torches, all that sort of stuff. But with the one I made, I had all the items on the side here in between each module. So pistons would go to there, servers would be here, 
comparators will be on the floor there, and so on. But yeah, so that's a couple other features I forgot to add uh, about each one and every these, these systems here. But yeah, just make sure that when you do use these crafters, you put shulker boxes in. If you don't do that, then um, I'm to work with shulker boxes, not with actual items. And then your output would be in the center chest here, your input is in the barrels, so the frame is the barrel above it, not the barrel below. So yeah, you can see that I moved away from the hopper ones. The hopper ones are just really, really slow because hoppers have a slow uh, transfer speed. With the droppers, you can basically pretty much take them uh, pretty much constantly. So with this simple circuit right here, we'll get very, very high amounts of items getting spewed out. So you can see that real quick. Uh, let's just throw a full stack and see how quick it gets unloaded. That's pretty much the fastest you can clock this dropper and you can see just how fast it gets unloaded. And that's pretty much the speed we can input items into the crafter compared to a single hopper, which is considerably slower. But yeah, so these are the crafters I've made so far. Uh, if you do want to see some other crafters, let me know down in the description and I can try my best to... If I find an interest, I will look at it, but um, if I don't, you can hope you can learn from this and uh, yeah, so there will be schematics and how to get them in the description down below. Uh, it's pretty much just join the Discord and there will be a section for all of these. And yeah, so don't really have any other plans to craft any other redstone uh, contraptions here. Everything else is pretty okay to craft. TNT might be one I do for when we do uh, something that needs auto crafting TNT. So we don't want to like manually craft that and stock it up. But yeah, other than that, be a like, subscribe, all those sorts of things, and I'll see you in the next one.